Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Guild Wars 2 Mythbusters. So this week we're going to be a little bit more chatty, starting out with myth number one. That is that you can teleport to your mini pet. Now I did hint at this last week. Uh, I'm going to explain the mini pet magic to you guys now. Turns out since the patch, if you jump onto some kind of an object like these hay bale, your mini pet will try its best to get close to you. This means things like teleporting through walls. And since the patch, if you now log out, the location of your mini pet will determine exactly where you log back in. So here I use the trick to get inside this house, uh, same location I've demonstrated some blink tricks before. It explodes the world open with a bunch of new areas you can now access, just like the arcane eye base from the personal story we showed off last Mythbusters. Myth confirmed! Oh yeah, myth number two! Any wielded kite will reduce but not eliminate falling damage. Now it seems kind of obvious that a kite wouldn't make you immune to falling damage as that would be insanely overpowered, but what about just reducing the damage? The idea here of course being that the drag of the kite will reduce the speed at which you fall. Here I'm testing out in the center of testing for Tyria, Ratasum. Uh, our first fall without a kite lands us on 3917 damage. Funny enough this was actually kind of a difficult myth to test. Minute changes in lag and uh, where the game detects you actually fall off a cliff will change the numbers you get radically. But this time with the kite, we should see a lower number. Ouch, and we don't, 4,554. Turns out the kites don't do a damn thing for falling damage. Maybe you could have seen that one coming. That's that myth busted. Myth number three for today is that the legacy of the faux fire lord can control the weather. What the hell does this mean? Well, here we're on Legacy of the Faux Fire. This is the PvP map where you get the Lords to kill. One Red Lord, one Blue Lord. And after a long period of time missing, interrupting the heal skill, I'll finally kill the Lord here. And what do you know? Killing the Lord, you guys may not have noticed, does cause a storm to appear. Most of us don't see this because if the Lord's dead, usually the match is about to be over. Myth confirmed. <laughs> As a little addendum too, you'll notice that the sky is tinted blue. So myth number two for this, if you kill the blue lord, does it give you a blue rainstorm? Does killing the red lord give you a red rainstorm? Let's uh, find out. Again, this guy was a little bit easier to kill. And what do you know? It's raining, but this time it was blue once again. Myth busted. So myth number four is that pets can use a surrogate. A simpler premise is that really, namely the idea is that they'll use the surrogate without you. Uh, you probably know that in Guild Wars 2 any summoned ally you have in most cases will always try to snap close to you if you get too far away from it. So the pets will do that also, but can they just go through a surrogate? Here's me demonstrating that this one works and a surrogate to two local places in Ratasum. And as we edge closer, well what do you know? Turns out they can go through a surrogate, and indeed if we scroll over to this distant area in Ratasum, you can see him blinking happily away over there. Here's some alternate footage of a drake from the other side, and this will only work if it is an surrogate that connects to two places in the same map. Your ball will not go on its own all the way over to Lion's Arch, for example. Myth confirmed. The next myth is that tonics resurrect pets. How does that make any sense? Well, let's find out. Here I've got two pets and a friend of mine beating the absolute snot out of them. You'll notice my pet cooldown is already up, so once this guy dies, both of my pets are dead. Here you'll see uh, I've got my ruminant tonic over in my inventory. We pop it, we come back out, doesn't matter what the tonic is. And oh look, that actually just recharged my pet cooldown. So I can press it, and my pet comes back at full health. Very handy little trick for you PvE rangers there in some places like Fractals of the Mists or anywhere you just want your pet to do infinite tanking. Just bring a stack of tonics and they will never be able to get rid of your pet. Pretty broken. Myth confirmed. This myth is that you may bow to a script to stop attacking you. We all know the script when too many of them uh, gather together, they get very intelligent. Usually in the game, you find they form royal families and have some kind of etiquette and honor code. Well, let's see, here's a friendly little script trying to tear my face off. We bow to him, the script sentry, and didn't seem to work. Let's try one more. 
Uh, we'll bow at to make sure we include that bit of the command. Nope, nope, this is just a load of crap. This bus. In a similar vein, you can threaten a crab to make it run away from you. Here we are in Blood's Tide Coast, plenty of crabs around. You'll notice, namely, that this is an ornery crab. And these guys actually emote at you as you walk past them. Turns out if we do slash threaten at, he will run away. Not only this, but he'll now become a hermit crab. Interesting little way of dealing with these fellas. Maybe you didn't know about. Myth confirmed. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Mythbusters. And do remember, leave in the comments if you have any cool myths of your own. I will test them out. And uh, results may appear on future episodes. Have a great day, guys. See you next time.